Hello everybody this is North Carolina Preppers Computer, I'm going to be orating this video and CP has a real bad sore throat and can't speak too well. A little while back I did a few videos on diabetes. Some of my subs asked me to talk about diabetes in a survival situation. I am a type 2 diabetic for a long time the question has been in the back of my mind. If I ever were to end up in a prolonged survival situation and ran out of meds, what would happen? Being a type 2 it's not a life or death thing, it's not good but it could be managed for a long time and you would just have to deal with the consequences later. Possibly years later, it all depends on how bad your type 2 is. Now my mom was a type 1. For her I had a small medical and cosmetic fridge attached to a 100 watt solar panel. And a 35 amp hour deep cycle battery. What could be a good way to keep it under control? First of all I'm a type 2 diabetic and I think in this instance it's important to put a bit of education into this video since there's a lot of ignorance and bad info out there. Type 2 diabetes is caused by a genetic disposition to insulin resistance which causes weight gain and can also be compounded by poor lifestyle. It's important to note that even though you can eat and exercise yourself back to health, you will still always be a type 2 diabetic who needs to avoid carbohydrate heavy meals since your body can never produce enough insulin to balance carbs, it's an easier version of diabetes to manage but the drugs you take are slow and not that effective generally. Most type 2s benefit greatly with low carbohydrate diets and can somewhat return to a normal lifestyle this way. In our house we are eating a ketogenic diet, that's under 20 grams of carbs a day. Type 1 diabetes has less of a genetic element to it surprisingly, and is commonly thought to be triggered by a virus or autoimmune attack. It's a common misconception that 100% of pancreatic cells are killed off or that they are then dead forever. It just so happens that the attack kills off more than the body can regrow so most type 1s have less than 10% effective insulin production which is next to useless and makes the management of this form of diabetes much more maintenance heavy. Every single activity needs to be closely monitored as it uses up blood sugar, the beta cells that are killed stop the conversation with the liver to release glucose which would normally keep your blood glucose up in the normal range should it drop so that's a double blow to the system. Equally, there is absolutely no assistance from the body to counteract carbohydrate intake, which means blood glucose is very brittle and can shoot up to dangerous levels in around 10 minutes should you not take insulin. Insulin is such a powerful injected hormone that even a tiny error in balancing the amount of injected insulin can plummet you into dangerous low blood sugar territory within 10 minutes with nothing to stop that happening. Injected insulin for meals stays in your system for 5 hours, 30 minutes or so for natural insulin, which causes overlap of insulin doses and you can screw yourself over by accident even if you're a veteran insulin user. Also any activity increases insulin sensitivity, throwing that food, insulin injection out of whack you took an hour ago, by a great percent so again it's really easy to put yourself in danger through no fault of your own. Type 1s is by no means the worst thing you can have, but it's by far one of the most management intensive diseases and grinds your will and perception of mortality down as you're making multiple life or death decisions every day. Anyhow, that's enough of that. It's straight up scary and depressing. Put in mind that with time, experience and the growing availability of new technology management of type 1 is getting easier and less of a hindrance to daily life. Yay technology. But that is for normal times. We are talking about the shit hit the fan. So normal supply of daily diabetic maintenance medicines will most likely be interrupted. During a shit hit the fan event the diabetic will be constantly thinking about his diabetes, when he's or she's out and about around in the woods or hiking he or she will be non-stop running checks against their well-being. Unfortunately the signs of low blood sugar are sweating, confusion and lightheadedness. 
all things that you'll probably experience while hiking anyway. If you get caught short in apocalypse or without your insulin you'll get between 24 hours and a week before you develop ketoacidosis, acidic blood due to your body breaking down fat and muscle because it can't access the carbohydrates you're eating in combination with high blood sugar. Without insulin some type 1 diabetics can a drink a lot of water to help postpone ketoacidosis. Without your meds type 1s are going to get boned. There is hope and I will talk about it in the next part. Without some variation of the equipment I list in the video info below a type 1 will not be able to save their self for more than a few months. For every month that you keep any insulin you might have beyond good refrigeration levels 39 and 50 degrees, that's 4 and 10 degrees Celsius, if not kept in that temperature range it'll lose 10% efficiency per month as the proteins denature. So what can you do as a diabetic to help yourself survive? You can lower your blood glucose by exercising but by exercising you'll burn muscle and fat in absence of eaten carbs so whereas this will lower your blood glucose, it will raise the blood acidity so that's not a good solution. You can drink alcohol that will stop the constant trickle of glucose from your liver, as your body can't do both things at the same time but that won't stop your blood glucose rising with food. Even with ultra low carb meals the body converts more of the protein fat into carbs than it would if you mixed some higher carbs in with that meal, because the body can exist on purely ketones, but still needs some carbs. Making and producing insulin is next to impossible, during WW2 Jewish captives extracted dog insulin eventually, although many died before they perfected and cleaned the insulin but they were trained medically and had access to sanitized medical equipment so forget that as an option, this isn't a case of eating a bear's pancreas and roaring at the moon to stay alive. I'd sure like that to be true. Well you could do it. But it will not help. You need to refill your prescriptions as soon as you can to stock up. I have heard, but I don't know for sure. But I have heard you can buy insulin over the counter at Walmart. You can also make a pot in pot refrigerator, clay pot cooler or zero as they are called, basically it is constructed by placing a clay pot within a larger clay pot with wet sand in between the pots and a wet cloth on top if you do have cool dry air and a constant stiff breeze, the interior of a zero pot can chill down to around 40 F. That is an ideal scenario. They are not usually that effective, but I'll take what I can get in a survival situation, or keep it in a flowing river. Don't let the insulin freeze because it becomes instantly useless. My mum was a type 1 diabetic, I bought the stuff in the video info below. You can make your own but this setup will allow you to keep your insulin or other meds cold. Let me add some notes. I think the most important thing for anybody to understand about treating diabetes is that you should never administer insulin to anybody yourself. While the symptoms of high blood sugar are visible on the order of hours, it takes days to weeks of constant high blood sugars for ketoacidosis to set in and cause a loss of consciousness. On the other hand, low blood sugar is an immediate threat to life that must be treated by immediately getting sugar into the person's bloodstream. Want to know how I know this? See my other video on diabetic emergency. If you find a person with diabetes who is unconscious, 99% of the time they have low blood sugar and need sugar. In the off chance that they have high blood sugar. Guess what, giving them a bit more sugar won't hurt them at that point. So, if a diabetic is unconscious or has a significantly reduced level of consciousness, administer sugar if possible. One of my subscribers made a commit on my video slow roll in Texas style said that EMS used to carry syringes filled with cake icing and when finding folks with extreme low sugars they used to squirt a few cc's under the tongue. His ex-wife said that peanut was her best friend in the middle of a blood sugar crash. By if possible I mean don't shove food in their mouth if they're fully unconscious. That's how you make them choke and die.
If they're unable to swallow on their own, you can make a sugar paste with sugar and water and rub it on their gums. This lets the sugar absorb directly into the bloodstream. Continue doing this until they regain consciousness. A person with diabetes dying from high blood sugar is extremely unlikely, and they'll know it's a problem before you do. The solution is simple, they take more insulin themselves, at the dosage they know is right. A person dying from low blood sugar is likely if it goes untreated. Always default to administering sugar. A good balanced diet of proteins, vegetables and limited fruit with pretty much no processed food in the equation would help all type of diabetics. You may already know this but prior to the 1920s, type 1 diabetics would manage their conditions through the use of diet alone. Insulin wasn't discovered until 1923. I have a diabetic dietary menu from around the turn of the century and it's the equivalent to a modern keto diet. All fat and protein, not much in carbs or sugars. It did contain things like a shot of whiskey as a method for managing spikes, since the liver processes alcohol before sugar, it would effectively work to slow the sugar from being processed a bit. If you have any questions or comments please post them below.